Now, Tom, it really feels like the global war on free speech has stepped up a notch. At the weekend, Brazil banned X from um, essentially operating mm -hmm. in the country, depriving 22 million users of accessing it. What have you made of this? Well, I think, as you say, it's an escalation. I think there's, it probably won't be the last country to at least toy with doing this. It is worth pointing out that in banning X from its territory, it's joining a bit of a rose gallery mm. of countries, um, Iran, China, North Korea, these are the <laughs> kinds of countries that it's joining up with. And yet, despite this being such a rash and authoritarian move, particularly when you realise the context for it, so mm. this was because of the fact that X um, were refusing to comply with various demands that were being placed on it, particularly by its Supreme Court, one of which was that it was demanding that various accounts be taken down, be booted off of X, be suspended. And these accounts just so happened to be ones who were associated, largely speaking, with the right-wing firebrand Jair Bolsonaro. Mm. They were, you know, basically asking this platform to engage in kind of political meddling. Yeah. Um, and because of the more free speech policies of the platform, and also because probably not wanting to be drawn into this kind of political controversy, they've now been booted out of that territory. Um, so it's one of those things where what you're basically seeing now is... Um, in a, in a way, just a more rash and a more brazen version of what various governments in the West and certainly the EU are spoiling to do, which yeah. is to say you're not clamp clamping down on dissenting speech, however defined. Some of it, I'm sure, generally full of nonsense and unpleasant and um, reactionary, but that's not the point. The point mm. is that you shouldn't be leaning on social media companies, leaning on Silicon Valley to suppress voices that you find disagreeable. And yet yeah. that's precisely what has been happening. I think... What was also interesting is that despite how authoritarian this is and despite the kind of company Brazil is now keeping by banishing X from its territory, was that you still had supposedly liberal voices, certainly in, across Europe and around the kind of Brussels blob, saying that this was precisely the right decision and yeah. if anything, this is something that we should begin to look at. So it, the depths of authoritarianism amongst these people, even as they're cheering on a an act that would make you know Kim Jong-un nod in approval is fascinating. No, it's, it's shocking and it's worth, you know, pointing out that some of the accounts that um x were asked to censor mm -hmm. and we're not talking we're not just talking about removing posts we're talking about you know permanently yeah. suspending people from from x included elected representatives yeah. but representatives of of the wrong party mm -hmm. i mean it's it, it's a level of you could so you can understand why musk pushed back it's also worth thinking about the fact that also you can see from the twitter files that even before Musk took over, there was a little bit of a struggle yeah. between what was then Twitter uh, and the Supreme Court. They were, um, they didn't, uh, in the end, they often bowed to the request, but there was some pushback from um, Twitter's lawyers. So again, it's not this, a lot of people want to make it out as this, uh, Elon Musk has gone rogue. Mm -hmm. um, he's disobeying the laws of a sovereign territory. You know, how dare he? Um, Brazil has every right to bring him to heel. Yeah. It's it's not that simple at all. And in fact, it's, you know, I think it's a bit of a canary in the coal mine situation. Yeah. Because as you said, Tom, you know, many people in Europe, I imagine the UK too, are spoiling to do the same. They're spoiling to take this pesky social media platform off the internet because it has slightly more free speech than yeah. Facebook or Instagram or you know some of the other approved uh, platforms. It doesn't have false free speech. It just has a bit more of it. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's enough for them. I think the other thing that's worth saying about this Brazilian ban is the fact that it's a reminder that they like to pretend that this is about an elected government or in this case, a Supreme Court justice bringing these tech bros to heal, mm. you know, them and their billions and their platforms and so on. But also as part of this crackdown, anyone who uses X yeah. using a VPN could be fined up to something like £6,700 per day mm. for the pleasure. And it's just a reminder that whilst they like to present this as this is us going after the big boys, this is us going after the oligarchs, this is us going after these corrupt institutions and so on, that it, it all comes down to just punishing the user, yeah. the individual, the citizen. Those are the people they don't trust. Those are the people that they want to bring to heel. And that's as true in Brazil as it is across the EU and amongst all the other countries which are mulling over doing something similar.